In 1915, the muse of painting came to Winston Churchill. He was 40 years old and it would stay with him for the rest of his life. In 2015, I began a journey to find these locations. I took a joyride in a paint box along the French Riviera. While Mr. Churchill was on holiday at Monte Carlo, he spent a good deal of his time painting at Cap Dye. As everyone knows, he's pretty good at it too. And what's quite clear from our film is that on the Côte d'Azur, he not only had some very attractive subjects to paint, but also plenty of tools with which to finish the job. So we're here at the Column d'Or in St. Paul de Vence, and Churchill had lunch here and signed the guest book. But what we're interested in is a painting that he did of the fountain in the old village. This painting featured in the BBC programme Fake or Fortune is of the fountain in St. Paul de Vence. During my research, I was allowed to go to Chartwell and look through the archive and actually found a photograph of it, a mysterious figure holding the painting. Ultimately, we proved that it was Churchill holding the painting at Chateau Horizon in the mid-1930s, so it was authenticated and added to the canon. A rare thing to happen and a real highlight for the book. Chateau Belsom was one of the few places on the Riviera that Lady Churchill liked to stay. A recent discovery is of the pavilion. This was thought to have been painted at Port Lim in Kent, though this is still yet to be confirmed by the Churchill Paintings Group. In the 1920s, Churchill met Gabrielle Coco Chanel, instantly taken by this capable and agreeable woman. Winston's publisher, Emery Reeves, later purchased La Pausa. Churchill relished his time there in the 1950s, painting and writing much of the English-speaking peoples. town of Mougin, the chapel of Notre Dame de Vie. It lies just above Cannes. And in 1934, Winston Churchill pitched his easel up just over there. Staying at the Chateau Horizon on the coast, Churchill would visit the Guinness family at the Mad de Notre Dame de Vie, which lies just next door. Years later, this would become the final home and studio of Picasso. When Churchill traveled, he would have a veritable studio on location with this enormous easel, parasols, T-squares, brushes, paints, Stetson hat, cigars, and of course his Johnny Walker and soda. And it would be the job of his valet and the Scotland Yard detectives to set this equipment up for him. 
This particular canvas is a 20 by 24 inch and it was quite a common size for him and they were usually supplied by Robeson & Co in London. And of course his beloved palette, he loved his colours and they would all be fully out there. He actually wrote a letter about this painting to his wife Clementine in 1934 from Chateau Horizon. He says, my darling, I have painted four pictures and begun another. I think you will be surprised by them. I have done a new one of Notre Dame de Vie a la Nicholson, very luminous. If you like it, it should be for your bedroom at the flat instead of another. It is the best I think I have yet done, signed W. And I think he's right. I think he's captured the dappled light on the church perfectly. Between Cannes and San Rafael on the coast lie the red rocks of the Estrelle Mountains. In the 1930s, Churchill would discover these remote locations and commit them to canvas. This is one of the last locations that I found and one I thought I'd never make. Red rocks on a coastline full of red rocks. But I luckily found this antique postcard and I recognized the shape of the cliff behind me. It also had a name, Latreus. So I zoomed in on Google Earth and I found where I thought he stood and then I came to visit and sure enough, this is the spot, this remote bay. Now Churchill had a word for places that he thought were very paintable. It was a made up word of paintatious. And as an artist, if I were setting up, this is paintatious to me. But he made the unusual compositional choice of zooming on this cliff face. And there's about an hour of light where it turns vivid red against the blue. And this is what he ended up with. And I think that was his motivation for painting, is purely colour. So we're here at the Porte de Crouton, which is on the west side of Cap d'Antibes toward the end of the day. And this painting was a great discovery for me because it led to another well-known painting, which I'll show you in a moment. But this arch in the wall was the key that made me find this. I remembered it while driving around here, possibly painting here. And this deco building is still there, as is the white large villa on top of the hill. But this lovely jetty, this stone jetty is still here. The beach has changed now into little huts the fishing boats that he's put in with the little figures to give it life, not much has changed. It's still very much a little working port, even though there are a lot more pleasure craft here now. And that led me to finding this painting, which is called A Study of Boats. It took me months to find this. But once I found the other one, I realized he's just turned his easel around and he's painted on the same harbor wall. You can see the peninsula of Cap d'Antibes in the distance, and it becomes all apparent once you know where it is. This was a very successful painting for Churchill in that it was made into prints and it was often reproduced in books and magazines. And it's a very successful find for us. I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England and the coat of vice historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I am very well acquainted to his matters mathematical. I understand the question. In 1948, Time right magazine followed Churchill on a painting trip through Provence. The photographer captures this journey in candid images. We pass through Lourdes Marin, Fontaine de Vaucluse, Trois Sauté Bridge near Aix-en-Provence, and the Mount Saint Victoire, so often painted by Cezanne, who was such an influence on Churchill. And differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and in calculus. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I have the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> 
Winston Churchill is painting fearless impressions in our garden these days. It reminds me of Nero fiddling. This was in a letter from Ralph Curtis in 1921 from the Villa Sylvia in St. Jean Cap Ferrat. I discovered two Churchill paintings here, and what makes this remarkable is that no one ever knew Churchill was there with John Lavery painting. Thank you. 